it's so simple. And you want to get into some real meat, you know. And then he just says, you know, do what I told you to do. <laughs> just do what I told you to do. Yeah. I must be familiar with Joy. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> just do what I told you to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, manufacturing right? Yeah. <laughs> Daniel chapter 11, and this part of it talks about, I want to uh, start with verse 32. I don't have time to read all this, but I want to start with 32. It's talking about the last days. It's talking about the rise of the Antichrist and things that people will live through. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries, the Antichrist. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. Do exploits, great and mighty things for God. It'll be him, not us. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil. Many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hope, helping, hoping, helping with a little help. With a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it's yet for a time appointed. This word fall, when he's talking about falling, it doesn't, it, doesn't necess, it doesn't mean backsliding. Look at this again. Fall by the edge of the sword. That, that means they were killed. Yeah. <laughs> by flame, that means they were killed. By captivity, that means they were imprisoned. And by spoil, many days, and when they shall fall... Or when they are come to the end of their race, I guess you might say. They shall be helped with little help. And that's what I want to talk about. <coughs> little help. Because I can see that the enemy has a lot of God's people so busy. They don't have time to help. Oh, that's We got plans, everybody has plans. Someday the plans will stop. Yeah, they will. We have activities and things that we need to do. Everybody has things we need to do. But it says they'll be helped with a little help. That speaks to me that there won't be a whole lot of from the left and from the right and from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, there won't be a lot of help for the saints of God. Come on. Hello? Come on. Yeah. You're right. I can remember days and times in the past when you called a revival and God was moving, you couldn't keep people at home. That's right. Come on. They couldn't wait to get in the presence of God. And when they got there, they couldn't wait to pray for somebody. But it seems like the enemy, and thank God for the altar service we had last night, and thank God for the folks who made the effort and came and prayed and prayed with people. But some places you go and folks sit back in the congregation and fold their arms. And you're trying to get... Somebody prayed through. Yeah. Some places don't even know what. Pray through. Pray through. They don't know what that means. True. That's like an old timey term that they don't understand. Pray through. That's true. Yeah. You're right. Come on. Yeah, you What's are. that? That's when you pray till you touch God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not in those words. You pray till you don't want to drink no more. And you pray till you don't want to smoke no more. And you pray till you don't want to lie no more. And you pray till you don't want to cheat no more. And you pray till you don't want to commit a no more. And you pray through. Hallelujah. 
But a lot of the movement, charismatic movement today, all you got to do is come to church and praise the Lord for a while and say, hey, I'm, I'm okay, I'm going to heaven. And folks don't know what it means to pray through. I got to talk to somebody tonight. Come on, Preached a message not long at Brother Rooker's church uh, in Mooresville. God gave me, I don't even remember now what I titled it, but <coughs> the message had to do with folks that's been around for a while. Folks that's seasoned and know what the move of the Holy Ghost is. Folks that know what it is to pray through and get a hold of God. Folks that know what it is to really touch God in the presence of God walk with you every day. That generation is almost gone. True. Amen. Still, that's the truth. I got to talk to somebody tonight. Come on. I, I, I got to tell you that that generation is almost gone. My God. Talk to me. Tell us. Amen. And if the younger generation isn't trained. That's right. That hey, you just can't play church. That's right. Yeah. And come in and act like everything's okay and go back out and sin and come back in and get in the pulpit and preach when you're shacking up with somebody. Oh, you go oh, 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 my God. My God. Oh, my God. Wow. Amen. Great job, man. And see, folks that really, really, really know the move of God. It's our responsibility. People who know the real move of God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yes. Even though sometimes we're helped with a little help. Oh. Ask Sister Julie. She travels. She knows. And you get out there in some of those places that don't know how to move in God like you folks know how to move in God. And you're on your own without any help except the Holy Ghost and God's angels. Amen. Praise God. Help me. Help me, Lord. And you know, you'd like to take a busload of folks from Gateway Tabernacle with you. Amen. <laughs> and say, we're going into this place and we're going to storm the gates of hell and we're going to see the devil run out of town and we're going to see people get saved and we're going to see people set free and we're going to see folks delivered by the power of God. But folks don't want that kind of move much. A lot of folks don't want their hair messed up. They don't want to sweat and get their makeup all stricken and you know, all that kind of stuff. I got to talk to us tonight. You know the move of God. Amen. You know the move of God. You ought to be praying for this man and woman of God up here every day. Hold him up before the Lord. Say, God, keep Brother Pat here till Jesus comes back. Come on. Because this says that these folks, and if you've read Fox's Book of Martyrs, we've already seen this happen in history. But we know that we're living in times when, folks, a lot of times there's not the help you need. If you get sick, there's not the help you need. If you're out of a job, sometimes there's not the help you need. Why? Because we're so busy. We're too occupied to make sure that God's people are provided for. Come on. To make sure that God's people are prayed through until they get healed. To make sure that God's people are prayed through until they get a job. Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. We don't want to be like these folks, amen, that Daniel spoke about. Hallelujah to God. We want to be ready to go when the trumpet of God sounds. Hallelujah. And the only way we're going to be ready is to help one another. Glory to the Lamb of God. I love Jesus. Jesus. Amen. I've been in places where preachers were so jealous of one another they wouldn't help one another. That's to your own demise, I hate to have to tell you. Because we need each other. You may preach better than me, that's fine. But I need you. Come on. Preach on, but I need you. Hello. Come on. Yeah, come 
Good preacher. The devil is trying to divide the church, and if he can divide the church, then he can devour. You might not like the same color I like, and you might not like the same hairdo I like, and you might not like the same jewelry I like, but that's okay. Let's don't fall out over it. Let's love one another and pray for one another and help one another and see God move. We have to have help from one another. Come on, we have to have it. No man is an island. Hallelujah. You can't run this race by yourself. Come on, hello. Hallelujah. How many knows? Hey man, you need someone. Hey man, Lord to God, to preach to you once in a while. I need someone to preach to me once in a while. Hello. Oh, hallelujah. 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 One evangelist told me he's on Facebook and somebody got on Facebook. Hey man, and said, don't you go to that church over there. Blah, 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 blah. I said, you better talk to God. Because it don't make no difference what anybody says about where you're supposed to be. If God says you're supposed to be there, you better be going. Come on, hallelujah. If it's a lie, it's the end of the fiery furnace. They better fall of snakes. Hey man, if God says go, you better go. Hello. Hey, I'm tired of people trying to divide the body of Christ, Brother Pat, and put down preachers that are seasoned, that has been in this for years. Hey, hallelujah. Preachers in that house. When we get to where we don't we, we don't think we need somebody else's help, that's when we really need help. That's when we really need help. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know who to get advice from? God. Get it from God and then get a confirmation from somebody that's been in this for years and knows what he's doing. Amen. 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 Amen
Dignified. Dignified. I used to be dignified. We don't want to talk about that. It'd take me an hour to put that hairdo up there. But I went through a trial. I went through a trial. <laughs> that when I got to church, I had to get in the presence of God or I wouldn't have made it. The trial drove me. Drove me. To the secret place of the Most High. It drove me. Yeah. To seek for the holy of holies. It drove me to get in a place in God where I didn't have to worry about what they said about me. I didn't have to worry about what they thought about me. I didn't have to worry about what they thought about whether I was supposed to preach or not. But all I could do was get in that place and keep my eyes on Jesus and just keep on keeping on. Thank you, Jesus. I'd shout that hair new deal. <laughs> I wasn't dignified no more. I said, I can't be all this dignity stuff. I can't be dignified and get in the presence of God and have the present and anointing of God on me to break yokes and to destroy yokes and to break bondages. I've got to be in the presence. You get to where you don't care. That's right. Let me in your presence, Lord. And when God speaks to you, and He says you abide in the calling wherein you're called, and all hell's broke loose around you, and you don't know what to do, you will get in the presence of God, or you won't go on. Come on. You won't go on. But this scripture says they were helped with a little help. They weren't helped with a lot of help. And I want to say to you that are here tonight, you need one another. Amen. When Jesus in 1 Thessalonians talked about through the apostle, when he talked about the, the rapture of the church and the coming of the Lord, and he described that, and how that the dead in Christ would rise first, and we which are alive and remain would be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And he said, comfort one another with these words. Amen. What's he saying? He said, be a strength to one another. Yes. Edify one another. Yes. Lift one another up. Yes. Build one another up. Come on, how to do to God. So I said, well, I'm not a preacher. That don't, that don't apply to me. Well, he didn't say preachers. <laughs> we need each other. Amen. You need your pastor. Yes, you need a man of God, a woman of God. You need somebody who knows how to get a hold of God whenever everything's going wrong in your life. Come on. That's right. Come on. Help with a little help. That's sad, isn't it? Yes, it is. Jesus said in the last days the love of many would wax cold. Yeah. Yeah. Used to whenever folks would start praying around the altar, whole church would come pray with them. Yeah, that's yeah. True. I sure remember. Yes. Yes. People would jump up out of their seats and yes, run to pray with somebody that was lost. Yeah. Hello. You're right. Amen. Hello. Remember us. Yeah. <coughs> and we've got to get back the to the move of God. Because Jesus is not coming for a lukewarm church. Amen. I'm sorry, he's not coming for a lukewarm church. No, he is not. No, Amen. Is not. And you can be a help to your brother. You can be a help to your sister. You can be a help to a preacher. Sometimes I've had people come to me after church. This is one person come up to me after church and say, Sister Phyllis, I really felt like praying for you tonight. But, but you know. <laughs> they think because you're anointed, everything's cool. And everything's going fine. That's not always true. This pastor sits up here and tries to be strong for everybody else. So sometimes we think, well, Brother Pat's doing great. Yes. <laughs> All is well. Sometimes. Hello. <laughs> Sister Daisy doing good. You don't know what they're going through. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sister Julie, look how anointed she is. 
<laughs> Man, every time she comes, she is a popping around the oh, place. Yeah, no problem at all. I know she don't have any trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Carter, I know he don't have no problems. <laughs> he can't, he, he couldn't possibly have any problems. He looks so happy all the time. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Follow through. <laughs> <laughs> Got to. So we don't, we don't make an effort. Church, let me tell you tonight, we need each other. You can't just be helped with a little bit of help and get the job done. I got to tell you, you can ask any evangelist that's been on the field by themselves and been out there in the rough places. You get more done when you have more help. Amen. You get more done when you have more help. Amen. You get more accomplished when you have more help. Yeah. Now I'm talking. See, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. See, who who am I talking to? I'm talking to you, and 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 I'm talking. To, see, I'm not just talking to preachers. Amen. Amen. There is a gift that helps in the body of Christ. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And I'm sure that works in government, same as in the spirit. Sure. Yep. Hallelujah. Thank God. But whenever everybody, put, here's what my pastor's wife used to say, and my pastor used to say years ago in Greenwood, Indiana. He's home with the Lord now. They say, everybody, put your shoulder to the wheel. Yeah. <coughs> Come on. Yeah. Amen. Somebody, some of you looking at me like you don't know what I'm. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's good stuff. Okay, come on, you're doing good. You're doing good. Come on, Chris. When you're pushing that wagon up the hill. Oh yeah. Amen. Uh, Everybody wants to ride down it. They don't want to push it. Hello, you're pushing that wagon up the hill. Come on, he's so my tire, my yandara, my satire. How many you all been on the hayride? I know you've all been on the hayride. Come on. Yeah, and hook up whatever's pulling the wagon, try to push it up the hill by yourself. You know, everybody put your shoulder to the wheel. Come on, everybody put your shoulder to the wheel. Wow, well, that preacher's anointed. They don't need no help. Come on, come on. Is anybody out there? Come on. The more help you get, the more help you got, the more you get done. Everybody, they say, everybody put your shoulder to the wheel so we can have church tonight. Praise God. And we did. Amen. And God moved. Amen. And we did. And God moved. Amen. And we did. Amen. And God moved. Amen. And we did. Amen. And God moved. And we did. It's not a one man show. It's not a show to begin with. It's all about God. It's about the body of Christ. Functioning in the Spirit with the anointing of the Holy Ghost that God drops on your life. He told And not just coasting down the other side of the mountain, but pushing to get the load up on top of the hill. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And you know, you, the devil will make you feel insignificant. He'll make you feel like you're nothing. Yeah. You're nobody. They don't need you. He's a liar. Yeah, he's, he's a liar. Is. Sure he's a liar. Absolutely. He's a liar. Yeah, that's right. Everybody yes. knows. You don't need to go play that guitar tonight. You're tired of him. Why don't you just sit home in the recliner and watch TV or something? <laughs> <laughs> Did he tell you that? He's a liar and the father of lies and the truth's not in him. I'm glad you came. <laughs> he told you that? He told her that tonight. Second night of revival. He told the bass player that. I rebuke that devil in Jesus. You're here. Hey, that poor drummer is a hardest working man in the band. I know, and he is. He's been sick. He's been deadly sick, but he's, he's here. He's doing better than he's here. Hallelujah. He's working it. He's working it. There used to be an old song. I'm uncle. There used to be an old song called Working the Road. Did you ever hear that song, yeah. Working the Road? <laughs> Do you sing that here sometimes? Sister June sings it. Does she? Working the Road. How many knows what that means? Working the Road. Do yeah. yeah. you know what that means? What are we doing? We're paving the way for those who are coming along behind. Yeah. 
or training men. See, these are some of <laughs> See, the newer generation don't know none of this stuff. They don't know none of these terms. They don't know this stuff. Right. We're kind of trained. But you don't hear it from me when Jesus comes back. Working the road. What are you doing? You're paving the road for somebody to come along behind. Amen. Right. Amen. Have you seen these guys out in the summertime when they're repaving a road? Yes. Have you seen them out there in the heat? Yes. Have you seen them out there sweating and digging and jackhammering and just out there working to build that road? Have you seen them out there working, busting rock to build a road? Yes. Somebody said, oh, praise the Lord, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, hallelujah, here I am, bless me. <laughs> Come on. I gotta teach you how to work the road. I gotta teach you how to work. I gotta teach you how to work. Brother Ron knows how to work. I gotta teach you how to work. Because when you learn how to work, if the Lord takes me out of here, you'll know what to do, won't you? Amen. You'll know what to do. Amen. You'll know what to do. They were helped with a little help. Well, I'd like to be helped with a lot of help. Amen. I'd like to see Brother Pat, Sister Daisy help with a lot of help. Yeah. I'd like to see Sister Julie help with a lot of help. She don't mess around. That girl don't mess around. I'd like to see Sister Irene help with a lot of help. Amen. Why? <laughs> Why? Easier. Because we want to see souls born. Yeah. Yeah. You're a part of that. Amen. You're a part of that. Amen. Your help is a part of that. Exactly. Your help is a part of that. I appreciate you moving in the Holy Ghost. I appreciate you moving in the Holy Ghost. I appreciate you moving. I appreciate you moving in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I used to come up here and I'd say, Julie. That's where she started preaching. Get the people set free. <laughs> she would. She did. She did. Now look what she did. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Traveling and preaching all over the place. I don't want to leave you without weapons of warfare. No. I don't want to leave you without understanding of knowing. You gotta love your brother, number one. Amen. We gotta love each other and work together, yes. children. Yes, we do. If you're not a preacher, don't worry about it. Just say, Lord, what kind of help do you want me to do? How do you want me to help in the kingdom? What kind of help do you want me to be in the kingdom? Because I want the kingdom to flourish and I want it to go. Hallelujah. I know this hasn't been a great message. Didn't plan on it being. Uh, because I thought myself, I thought, man, I'd like to preach something else, Lord. goodness. He said just... Talk about what I gave you. So, okay. Good message. What? Very good. Good message. Well, we well, needed it. You got to have help, children. Yes. So the person you're sitting next to tonight may be suffering in their body. Exactly. They may be tormented in their mind. They may be problems they wouldn't tell you for anything. But your prayers and your love and your kindness can make a difference in their lives. Say, God, what kind of help can I be in this revival? Lord, what can I what kind of help can I be to anybody that comes through the door? Brother Bodge Carnahan used to say to us, if you're coming to church and you've got to low, get your mind off yourself. That's what he tells us. Get your mind off yourself. Get in the spirit and help somebody else. That's what he tells us. I'm telling them what you said, Pastor. I'm telling them what you said. And the Holy Ghost had rolled in that place. People would get saved in the back of the house. Little kids would shout all over the platform. <coughs> The devil hates the Holy Ghost. Yes, he does. He don't want the Holy Ghost moving, Brother Carpenter. No. He don't want the Holy Ghost no, moving. He, wants stuff. he don't want anybody that's anointed to get in their call and do what God's given them to do. So he'll try to get your help. He'll try to get your help. Well, oh, I'm talking to somebody. But when he sees you're going on anyway, that's right. 
When He sees you're going to serve God and do what He gave you to do anyhow, yes. you'll have to get His fingers off of your work. Amen. I'm done. You may stay in it.